Welcome back to my electric motorcycle conversion project, where in this video, we're gonna be going over the calculations needed to size the motor for the uh, parameters that I'm looking for. So we're gonna start out with the various uh, knowns in the equation. So we're gonna go with the bike mass. So for that, I'm looking to keep it and this is a ballpark, but I'm looking to keep it about the same mass as the existing bike with the internal combustion engine in there. So we're, that's about 275 kilos. So we're gonna list that as mass of the bike. So for rider plus gear, so this is gonna be me plus my gear weight, I'm gonna ballpark that we're around 75 kilograms. That is going to be the mass of the rider. And so next up is my desired speed that I'd like to be able to go. So I'm gonna be doing the top end speed, obviously for this one. So for this, it's I'm looking for about 70 miles an hour, which is 110, 112 kilometers per hour, which when you convert, comes down to 31.29 meters per second. So that's gonna be our velocity that I'm working with. So the coefficient of rolling friction, I'm estimating that around 0 0.02 for rolling friction coefficient. That's based off of just online uh, estimates for rubber on concrete so again to be taken with a grain of salt but we'll add we'll bake in some conservatism later on next up we have good old gravity that's gonna be our 9.81 meters per second squared and then we're gonna have the air density So for this, I'm just assuming standard atmospheric conditions, standard temperature, all that. So 1.225 kilogram per cubic meter. That is going to be rho or our air density. And then this is where we uh, start to bake in some of that conservatism. So we're gonna go with our drivetrain efficiency. So I'm going to assume roughly 90% or 0.9 as our drivetrain efficiency. So the power the motor puts out, 90% of that will get through all the way to the back wheel. And then last up, the one where I'm least uh, sure about is a CD times A value, where this is the coefficient of drag that's your CD times frontal area so this is gonna be your air resistance value so I'm this one uh, after a bit of poking around online uh, some I found resource that includes some typical values so I'm ballparking on the little higher side just just in case so that's going to be 0.75 this is meters squared area meters squared and then coefficient is unitless so these are the uh, given values that we have for this setup so next on to the first equation. So this is going to be for the power needed, or the rolling force. How many newtons of rolling force is there going to be based on these parameters here? So the rolling force is going to be, to be a rolling friction, coefficient of rolling friction times mass of the bike plus mass of the rider, me, and then 
times gravity. So this is going to come out to 0 0.02 times 275 plus 75. That's the two values there. And times gravity. So this value comes out to 68.67. And so double checking units, go through here. First one, that's unitless. And this is measured in kilograms. So we've got kilograms there. This is meters per second squared. So meters per second squared. And one Newton is one kilogram meter per second squared. So we've got our first value there. Next up is the drag force. This is going to be, so this is your rolling resistance, here's your air resistance. So drag is going to equal one half rho CDA times velocity squared. So in this we're using, we have one half is a constant times our rho value, that's our air density, 1.225. And then next up is our combined CDA value. I'm using a combined value because I can find the frontal area, I can calculate that pretty easily. Finding the coefficient of drag requires testing, so I'm just, again, basing off of some, some values for a combined CDA. So that is going to be our 0 0.75 from here, and then times velocity squared. So that is going to be speed 31.29 squared. And so throwing down the units real quick, our 1.225, that is in kilograms per cubic meter. Our 0.75 is in meters squared. And then our velocity is, that is our meters per second, but squared, so meters squared over second squared. So we've got kilograms stays there, meters cancels out like that. So that comes down to our final drag force of 449.75 kilogram meter per second squared, or newtons. So units check out, force for both rolling force and drag force in newtons. So now that we have these forces, now let's calculate the power required to cruise at, these, at this speed and these parameters. So this is going to be our To be our cruise engine power. So we're going to go power equals our rolling force plus our drag force times again the speed we're going at and then here's where that efficiency factor comes in. So this efficiency factor that's going to directly affect the engine power, we're baking that into the engine power itself. So this is going to come out to 68.67 newtons rolling force, plus our 449.75 newtons drag force, multiplied by our velocity, so that's going to be the 31.29 meters per second, and times 1 over 0 0.9, which is our drivetrain efficiency that we're assuming. So this power is going to come out to, this is going to be roughly 18,024 watts when you plug this strictly into a calculator. So checking the units on this real quick. 
we've got in this one newtons times meters per second and then this is unitless so newton meter per second is a lot so you get to check out so this comes out to approximately 18 kilowatts required to cruise at this speed 31 meters per second 70 miles an hour roughly assuming these parameters so also what I'm going to do I'm going to bump this up a little bit just for conservatism so we're going to uh, size the motor so motor power that we're going to look for is going to be on the order of approximately 20 I don't know probably we'll say we'll look within the 20 to 25 kilowatt range just so that if one of our other numbers happens to be a little low, not completely accurate, we can still make our goal with a little room to spare. So, taking a look at this, feel free to let me know if I missed anything, any other thing that should be calculated in here, or if any of my math is wrong. So, but I will be looking for motors within this range. That way I can hit my speed of 70 miles an hour with that mass that we're looking for here. And go on from there. Next up is going to be starting on that disassembly, which should take a while, but it's gonna be nice to finally get my hands dirty on that. So thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.